Hey guys, Electro Ninja here, and welcome back to Electro Ninja's Lab. So, I love manga. You can kind of tell because of the fact that I'm already filling up my second shelf for manga. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but like I said, I love manga. But the thing is that... Oddly enough, it's actually really hard to find manga, at least here in America. Now, back when I lived in Nevada, it was actually a little bit easier for me to find manga, but the thing is, at that time, I wasn't as much into manga. My true love for manga didn't really start growing until I came over here. To California. Now, basically what I had when I was living over in America was, I think, the first maybe two volumes of My Hero Academia Vigilantes, a few volumes of My Hero Academia Normally, and maybe, like, uh, Blue Exorcist, I think. I think that was it. Nothing else. And then, now that I'm here in America, I'm here in California, I have an entire shelf filled with manga, and another one being filled now. So, what exactly am I getting at? For some reason, it's a lot harder to get manga over here in California than it is in Nevada. Which is odd because of the fact that there were only really two places to buy any books within an hour's distance from me. Those, of course, being one Barnes & Noble, which was a pretty big one, needless to say, and Grassroots Books, which was a mostly used bookstore, but those were the really only two places. However, luckily, most of the time, I actually had to go out to Reno in order to just do anything. So, while I was there, why not drop by, pick up a few manga, and then return home? So, but now that I live here, you'd think that since I'm in a more populated area, there would be more places that I could buy manga. But in actuality, that's not the case. Compared to the Barnes & Noble that was in Reno, this... Barnes & Noble has a much, much smaller selection of manga, while the Barnes & Noble there, uh, there had an entire row that was just filled with nothing but manga that was probably the, from the front of my, uh, this house to the back of it, which is a pretty big distance, like at least 30-something uh, feet. Yeah, I think about 30 feet, if I'm remembering the correct distance. Well, the one here is, I could probably fit it on this wall. Maybe a little bit more, but it that's not a joke. Now, the problem is that That's the only place to buy manga. That's at least within a decent travel radius. Because the way it works is that there are there are obviously other bookstores, but here in California, even a shorter distance takes a lot longer than it would in Nevada. And it's kind of sad <laughs> because of the way the traffic works and even if i were to ride a bike or walk even though there's it's a much shorter distance that I would be actually willing to do these things for some reason it's a lot longer of a trip in order to get to anything and if i want to go to a big city i have to take this, uh, I have to take public transportation, whether it be BART or if it were um, 
or if I want to take a ferry over to San Francisco. So I don't really have the same options as I did in Nevada, where I could uh, take a few minutes, maybe like uh, t maybe take two hours, drive into drive into Reno, pick up whatever manga or whatever I'm getting, maybe spend a little bit of time there doing other things, then take another hour back, and then I'm good. Now, it's... You think that it's a, it's a much shorter distance, but for some reason, it actually takes longer. Because it uh, in order for me to get to the Barnes & Noble here, it takes about 15 minutes, which is about the equivalent of going across town at my old... Uh, in my old hometown. That's, like, that's the long, the longest route took 15 minutes in my hometown. And in Reno, it takes, like, 15 minutes to cross it, in, if you're taking the freeway, which is not a bad thing. But here, there's really no other option than to go through the city and deal with crappy traffic. Now, this isn't a huge problem, but it does get annoying at times. So the question now is, why do we not have very many bookstores that have manga? Because there are other bookstores, not very many, but there are a few other bookstores out scattered around the, around the towns. But why exactly is it that manga is actually treated with such disrespect? Surprisingly, at the Barnes & Noble that I frequent, it's one step further than the comic books. Like, one step closer to the store, uh, to the front of the store than the comic books are. But in every single aspect, the manga is the less popular thing. Always push to the back of the store. We don't want people to know that we have manga here. And the real question is, why? In all aspects, manga is basically just a comic book. Very rarely is a manga much different than that. In fact, in comparison, the manga is actually closer to the equivalent of an actual book. Because... Let's be honest, more books become movies or shows than a lot of comic books. Let's be honest, that, that is the case. And uh, because of the fact that there's really only two major comic books, there's Marvel and there's DC. And really all that there is is the stuff that Disney puts out or the stuff that WB puts out when it comes to comic books. And that's it. There's a few other things here and there, but that's it for comic books. There's a few others, but very few. But when it comes to manga, there are countless, countless, well, fewer publishing companies. There's like, uh, there's Shoujo, uh, or Shonen Jump, and there's Kodansha. These are the two major ones, but there are a few others. But when it comes to, uh, releasing anime, there's Aniplex, there's Funimation, there's A1, all these companies create this, uh, create the anime, or just dis distribute it in those three cases, and then there's Studio Bones and other companies like them that are the ones that are actually creating this stuff and sending it out to us. And it's an odd situation considering the fact that there's, honestly, more manga than there is comic books. And most of these are actually more popular with everyone. Obviously, comic books are more seen as, oh yeah, you can share these with your children, which is, an, is still an odd situation considering the fact that many of these comic books are very dark. They are disturbing. They have... Well, to state it obviously, sex. And while, yes, some manga do have 
these things, it's a much smaller amount, and most of those aren't even sold in bookstores or anything of the like, while comic books get free reign. And as it comes for manga and anime, even though several of these stories would be amazing for kids to see, like, I guarantee that uh, if the 10 to 13 kids, they would, uh, they would love to be seeing My Hero Academia, and maybe even younger. But for some reason, we consider that idea to be not right. Like, we shouldn't be showing our kids this, because it's from Japan, but we're showing our kids these comic book movies, such as Deadpool, which is rated R, meant for mature audiences, and then there's plenty of sex in it, and yes, I'm dead serious, I, when I went to go see both of the, uh, both Deadpools, there were children in the theaters, and it was confusing as heck. It confused the crap out of me. But parents brought their kids to see that, but you wouldn't see parent, very many parents bring their kids to see, I don't know, the My Hero Academia movie. Well, yes, the My Hero Academia movie did sell out in every single one of the... Uh, play uh, every single theater that I went to, it's not to the same extent. We don't get these shows released over here in America on television for some reason. The only ones that are getting this treatment are, well, Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z, or whatever it is now, I don't know. But that's pretty much it. The rest of us have to go to things like Crunchyroll, Hulu, Funimation, and we don't get to see this stuff. It has to be us personally going and finding this stuff. And that means that the only way that our children are seeing these awesome shows and getting acquainted with it is if we buy these shows and show them. Now, obviously, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but considering the fact that in previous years, countless things were shown on television, like going to... Uh, uh, there was tons of anime on Cartoon Network, 4Kids, Disney Channel. Nowadays, Pokemon... That's pretty much it. Nothing... Uh, things obviously get translated to English, or uh, or we just get... Uh, and we sometimes we only get subs, but... Most of the time, things get translated, but they just never come out on television. It's kind of understandable, considering the fact that shows like Miraculous are a thing, where we get these shows that really should be aired in a specific order, but for some reason, the distribution decides, no, we're not going to do that. And it's confusing to many of us. But luckily, we are going to be getting a lot more information before too long with more shows like this. But we have to wait. The problem is that nowadays it is a niche market. Anime and manga have been getting more and more attention thanks to people like MatPat and other uh, and some of the AniTubers. People are subscribing to their channels, checking out their stuff, but the problem is that parents have to be the ones who decide, and if they're parents just so happen to be one of those people that didn't grow up with anime, they may not look into these things. One of the reasons why I didn't watch things like Soul Eater, Avatar, things like that, was because of the fact that it wasn't something that my parents knew about. And that's why, up until recently, I didn't know about anime. 
It actually took me up until I started watching stuff on Hulu and Netflix on my own that I started to find out about all of these amazing anime. And sadly, that's the case that's going to continue going for a lot of kids these days, unless people start to realize, yeah, we need to show people these anime. Because some of these shows are absolutely life-changing shows. Yes, obviously Promise Neverland is a dark show, needless to say. Um, My Hero Academia, it's a superhero show. Why aren't we showing our kids these things? Dr. Stone, it is extremely scientific. Like, honestly, if... Dr. Stone isn't shown in chemistry classes and physics classes before long, I will be shocked. Because, holy cow, that show is insane when it comes to these things. On top of that, Fire Force, it's also another show that is super, super important to these things. And when uh, and then there's things like Noragami. Again, a great show that has... A lot of stuff to do with culture. And the thing is that I don't think people understand how amazing and interesting culture is. The thing is that nowadays, and it's been like this for a while, everyone is so fixated on their own culture, especially here in America. Like, we're so proud to be Americans. We are going to we celebrate the 4th of July every year. We are going to build that wall or some bullcrap. And in actuality, we aren't actually learning about the other cultures. I have learned two languages in school. And they're my third and fourth language because of the fact that I learned English as my first language. My second language is the language I created, a CEO, and then there's Spanish and Japanese. In both of these classes, one of the biggest reasons I decided that I wanted to take these classes is because of the fact that you get to learn so much about the culture. And it's the same reason why I'm subscribed to certain YouTubers, because they are able to show us all of the things that are different about these cultures. The problem is that we are so fixated on, we are Americans, and we are going to make sure that we stay Americans, that we decide we're not going to look at these other cultures. We're going to accept some of these people, for sure, because they can improve the American way, but we don't take the time to say, wait, what about these cultures? makes them so interesting. If this video is a bit ranty, I'm sorry, but it is a problem that we often face in our modern society. We're so fixated on our own cultures that we don't take the time to look at the other cultures and see, oh, this is what makes them tick. And that is something that I think is really important nowadays, because if we don't understand what makes a culture tick, we don't get to understand what exactly is the reason behind what they're doing. For example, maybe if we learn more about the culture of Saudi Arabia or North Korea, we would understand more and be able to negotiate with them in a way that would actually work for both of us so that we would no longer be in a state where many of us are in fear of a war starting between those two countries and the rest of the world. Everyone is like, oh yeah, America, it's a superpower and stuff. But in actuality, it's not. We are limiting ourselves by not learning about the other cultures. And again, 
Japan is one of our closest allies. They have gained so much by just observing our culture and integrating it into their own that now it's one of the top places that I would love to live. And that's amazing. So if you guys are uncertain about what I've just been saying, then take a moment. Look at the culture of some other place. Maybe even take a foreign language class just to learn about the culture of whatever place you're thinking of. Don't necessarily go into it thinking, oh, I can learn a second language. Maybe I'll meet a cute girl and I'll be able to, or I'll be able to speak speak curse words that nobody will understand me, and blah, 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 blah. It's better to just take a moment and learn about the culture. Trust me when I say that you won't regret it. So, yeah. But anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you have any thoughts on this stuff, please leave your comments down below. But anyways, guys, I have been Electro Ninja, and I will see you guys next time. But on!